Ronnie Bell, four wheeling in westernaustralia.com and welcome to Modified episode number 42, I believe. I could be wrong, but let's just say 42. Behind me here, I have an 80 series Land Cruiser that's been in a couple of our videos. And right now we are filming out in the Pilbara. We are over halfway on our trip. We're probably the most remote at the moment. Let's not waste any more time and meet the owner. Harry, how you going, mate? Good, mate, how are you? Good. We've been hanging out for six days. <laughs> how <are> you going? <laughs> yeah, we're well acquainted, it's all good. All right, do you want to tell our audience about your 80, just all the specs, um, you know, manual auto, all that stuff? Yeah, sure. So it's a 91 uh, HDJ80, so it's got a factory turbo diesel, 1 HDT, 4.2 litre. It's got an intercooler. It's a Sahara model, so it has a few, you know, Sahara features like front and rear diff locks, um, all, it's full-time four-wheel drive, uh, center console fridge and ice maker, um, rear air conditioning, sunroof, uh, comfier seats, electric lumbar support, you know, just a few niceties which um, are pretty good for a 26-year-old vehicle. Um, front and rear solid axles, all coil springs. Um, so basically, a very capable dinosaur with all the fruit. It's a really good way of putting it, actually. Yeah, it's definitely a dinosaur, but somehow it manages to not feel like one when you're behind the wheel. And mm. I think that's a lot to do with the, the suspension, three link and five link coils. So what, what are we set it up for? This is set up to get bogged as little as possible, but mainly um, for, for remote touring. So Exactly what I, we're doing now. Exactly what we're doing now. Um, uh, it it's, doesn't have a huge fuel range, but I can carry a lot of jerrys. Um, and the reason I didn't go for a huge fuel, fuel range, we'll go through later. Okay, when we get to that point. All right, well, let's waste no time and just get stuck into the bar work. Sure. What do we got here? It's an ARB winch bar, but it's designed for a um, high or low mount winch. So you can, underneath here, there's another hole. For a, for a high mount, but I just use a, a low mount, oh. um, so it's quite, quite okay. simple. I just got it from a wrecker for 500 bucks. Recovery points, have you got any? Yep, aftermarket, these two, and then, um, yeah, that's it. Oh, they're bolted to the chassis. Yeah, these are bolted to the chassis. These, yeah. are, these are rated recovery points. Yeah. I've just painted them black. Okay, just at first glance, they look like they're coming off a bar. Yeah, yeah, no, they're, they're, they're bolted straight to the chassis. Mm. And these ones I only use for, you know, hooking that into it or something. Winch size and yeah, it's a um, uh, <laughs> does that help? No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is it? It's a oh, Smitty built, <laughs> Smitty, oh, built. Smitty built, Smitty built, um, 10,000 pound X20, uh, with, with rope, so it's lifetime warranty, IP68 rated American built winch. How long you had it? Uh, about a year. How many, how many times you use it? A lot. I nearly, know. nearly used it on me the other day. So <laughs> I used mine. <laughs> used yours. I had the opportunity to. I've winched myself out of a really, really bad situation with it, so it's definitely paid for itself. Yeah. Um, bogged in the mud flats in the Kimberley with tide coming in. Oh, maybe tell me. Crocodile that. infested waters. Yeah, it definitely paid yeah. for itself that time. You actually turned the whole car around with it. I did. Yeah, it winched pulling across here, like rubbing on the bar, and it just dragged the car around because I didn't have a front diff at the time. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> Fair enough. No drive. Your side rails. Side rails are custom made, three inch bar. They're made by a guy named Trent. And I don't know what his business name is, but I found him on Gumtree and he's ended up welding everything up for me. Um, oh, like a so backyardy. Yeah, backyardy. He's now got his own business, but he welded these up in his backyard for me. Um, when I got the rear bar modified and things, so I got a whole lot of stuff done by him. He's done a great job. Welded chassis plates on it and things. We're onto the rear bar now. And you've got lots of stuff hanging off it. I do, yeah. Touring vehicle or expedition vehicle, so you'd expect that. So we've got a tire this side, two jerrys this side, and 40 litres of water. 40 litres of water. Yep. Light post. Um, other than that, kept it pretty simple. Very handy light post, I must say, too. Yeah. You've got lights facing all different directions. Yeah, they, they can move quite easily, mm. which is good. Uh, 48 watt, 10 watt, 10 watt. So. Um, then rubbish bag custom made from someone in Queensland, I can't remember their name. Um, 
it has held up quite well, but I actually ripped it the other day, so not that well. Um, I'll get it fixed and it'll be fine. Yeah, fair um, enough. Swing on my arms. Oh, on struts? Not on struts, just gravity. We're down, just we're downhill. Um, uh, I like these latches a lot because you don't have to move the latches out of the way. Oh, when, when you, you go into it, the vehicle. A lot, of them, a lot of them, you unlatch them and then you have to move them and then, swing, then you can swing the arms out. These I just pull okay. and the arms fall out, which I really like. And they've got stoppers. Um, so on the back here, you got your hot plate. The back here, there's the hot plate, um, which is so useful. Keep it outside the car, keeps it, it's a dirty thing naturally. So um, to be able to keep it outside the car, but also not to block my bin bag. Usually I've also got a high lift jack on the back. Um, it sits behind the bin bag, but this trip we're yeah. trying to save weight. Sure, Karen. And we've got, actually no one's got a high lift jack, as it turns no. out. We all forgot to bring a high lift jack. I've got the bowl <laughs> jack. But we've got enough jacks between us, so it's fine. Um, custom recovery point in the middle here, so I can leave my tow bar in if I want to. Nice um, and high as well. Yeah, and then there and there, they work. This is a good recovery point here, so there's plenty of things to pull on. Um, plenty of different angles if you, you need. Know, there's no spot there, but it, that's the exhaust, so you don't particularly want one there anyway. Yeah, fair um, enough. And that's where you crushed your lot, yes, uh, three days ago? <laughs> yeah, tyre decided to spit its tread off, despite having about 90% oh, yeah. tread on the way here. So I'm missing a, a flare on the back now and smashed this light, bent the rear bar, which I don't know how it bent the rear bar because I've dropped this thing on a lot of heavy mm. things and, and that that's what did it. This area we are at is pretty damn nice. I'll put Very it on the nice. screen now so you can see. Beautiful. Got some random hillbilly floating down the river there. Don't know who he is. <laughs> Get out of here. Cheers, Murray. <laughs> <laughs> roof rack. The big uh, wagon roof rack with a ladder. Yeah. So uh, the, the roof rack itself is a track lander. Uh, I don't know how old it is. It actually came with a car, which was great. It's aluminium, uh, lightweight. The ladder came off a GQ Patrol. I got it on Gumtree for 40 bucks and had my mate Trent, who did my sliders and things, modify it. Please excuse the missing guard from the blowout. From the blowout tire. Um, haven't had time to fiberglass it up. Um, it's not that badly broken. Uh, anyway, slightly modified. Um, I've added awning tracks on the side and the back so that I can just slide an awning extension in and sleep on either side. Which is a really cool, cheap way of doing it. These um, are 10 bucks. Yeah. And you could actually put it on and then just angle it down, couldn't you? Mm. So it's 2.9 long, the, the extension. So you can actually get a whole swag, two, two swags out this way with it on an, on an angle. Oh, beautiful. You just peg down. So it's great. You can cook on one side and sleep on the other. Yeah. And, you know. Great way of doing it. And then a proper awning on the other side. Yep, ARB. ARB awning. Yeah. What's the size? Three meters by two and a half? 2.1 like by 2.5. It's a very old model. It's, a, it's about almost nine years old, that awning. So it's 2.1 long? Uh, 2.1 out, yeah. Uh, out, sorry. Yeah. And 2.5 um, wide. wide across the roof rack. Yeah. Yeah. You have a sunroof too, I'll just point out. <laughs> I do have a sunroof and it gives me a great view of my roof rack. <laughs> it's, it's not worth opening. <laughs> no. The wood. <laughs> this, is, this has been the wood carrier for the whole trip. On this trip, there are three utes and a wagon. Who's carrying all the wood? The wagon. <laughs> Every time. I mean, you, you do have the swags up there. I do have the swags, and then I but, throw the swags yeah. on, on Wayne's car so I don't damage the boxes. Um, and then we throw all the wood on here. And it carries, well, for legality's sake, let's say 80 kilos. It's yeah. more like 400. <laughs> more like 800. <laughs> nah, we're joking. <laughs> A lot though. On to lights and communication. We'll start with the communication. I believe you have, what, two UHFs here? No, single UHF, one handheld. That's UHF. Uh, the middle one is my phone booster. That's why I keep getting signal. Ah, oh, and tunes. <laughs> yeah, so not so many of the tunes at the moment. That's another casualty of this trip. Um, I've got a replacement, we just need to screw it on, they're, yeah. they're cheap. Stuff around with it later. Yeah. Your lights then? Lights are... Standard in here? Standard in there, unfortunately. Uh, the Sahara does have slightly better headlights than an 80 series, but it's like two candles as opposed to one. 
<laughs> pretty hopeless. Fair enough. HRDs? Yeah, HRDs. They're just 100 watt eBay jobbies. They were 100 bucks or something. Um, seem to do all right, though. They seem to do fine. Um, for the price, they're, they're great. They're full, they're, the thing is, they're fully water sealed. Um, and if I break one, I'm not going to, I don't care. Not going to cry about it? No, exactly. They're easy to replace, easy to find. They're available anywhere. So. Live bar? Um, genuine eBay. I know um, you don't like using it though, unless you're slow driving in the bush. That's exactly right, yeah. I've got the same issue, it, it annoys you. And the dirtier your bonnet is, the more it lights up. The more it reflects it. Yeah, so I've had a perfectly clean bonnet. It's fine. not too bad, yeah. Uh, but in this sort of condition, it's really only 40 k's an hour and less. Mm. It does pump out a decent amount of light. It's 240 watt, 18,500 lumen. All you need to do is hit one freshwater river. Once that dries, which will dry pretty quick because your hood is usually pretty warm, mm. the reflection is just mad. Yeah, yeah. At high speed is a problem. Yeah. Before we uh, finish the lights, uh, my Anderson plug. Anderson plug for um, solar, yeah? Uh, no, it's actually, that's an output. So that's for the tent set up somewhere or the, the water pump you saw. That's just a, an outlet oh, yeah. for it. Yeah. So if we have a tent, we like to be able to run an extension cord to it, charge phones and things inside the tent. And um, for long trips, we use the laptop to go through some photos. And Sahara power plant. Yeah, it's a one HDT. Factory turbo diesel 4.2. Um, I've kept it relatively stock um, for reliability. So cross country intercooler to keep the temps down. Piece of advice, don't ever hit a cross country intercooler or any intercooler with a high pressure sprayer. Otherwise you have to sit there with a knife like I did and unpick all the bent fins. Oh. Yeah. Runs 15 PSI boost on a stock turbo, which is I believe the safest, you know, the, it'll um, lo live long enough. It's like a safe load for your... For the stock CT26 turbo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're not overspooling it. Yeah, other than that, um, pretty stock. It's um, k and air filter and a, and a snorkel. You've got a remote res here from your shocks. I do. In the engine bay. Yep, we've got two of them. There's nowhere to sit them on top of the coil towers, so unfortunately they have to go in the engine bay. However, I had never had an issue with them getting too hot. Okay. Um, I've got a a temp gauge in, in the engine bay, um, and it's it never gets that hot in here, mm. which is good. You're not worried about um, diesel fuels or anything with this old beast, so? Nah. It's just gonna run on anything, really. It'll run on peanut oil and whatever, <laughs> peanut anything oil. in between. <laughs> um, Have you- Breeders uh, over there, but- Oh, yeah, the breeders? Yeah. So what are these from, the diffs? They're from the diffs, and the, the stock transfer case and gearbox breeders, come up to actually the back of the firewall, so I'm not too worried. Okay. Do, I mean, I've seen this vehicle already. It's very thought out and set up, but I, I fear there's something you've missed. Your locker breathers. Yeah, I have actually missed that. Um, they've got valves on them, so they don't take in water in theory. However, okay. all it takes is one of those valves to get clogged, and they won't. Mm. So that's definitely something that I want to do. Uh, three core brass copper heavy duty radiator um, and a, a cap on it that lets me release the pressure before, you open before it. I spray myself. Tires and lift. Bit of confined space here, but we'll make it work. We'll throw some images on so you don't have to look at our mugs the whole time. We'll start with the tires, Harry. I should start with the rims first. Rims. 80 series GXL um, steelies, some of the toughest rims around, weigh an absolute ton, but tough as anything. So. And you got your weight down low. Yeah, so these aren't the stock, stock rims for this car, this car came out on 15 inch alloys. Uh, mm. Post 93 they went to the steelies and I went to grab some from a GXL. What size rim are they? 16? 16 by 8. 16 by 8. Zero offset. Alright, so we have a well used tyre here. Yep. I was going to get some new ones, but I thought if I'm going to do 4,000 k's through quite hard terrain with shaley rock, I might as well, you know, give these a final, final bash and mm. then replace them later. They've done 70, almost exactly, 71,000 k's. Almost exclusively gets used off-road. 
you know, I, I do a little bit of on-road driving, but it, it's, a, it's a very much a tourer, it's not a daily. So the tyres, while they look pretty rough now, have done a lot of work. Um, you had them since new, obviously. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with them. Uh, I'm going to try something else next, but um, yeah. So BFG. BF Goodrich Mud Terrain KM2. The KM2s. Yeah, in a, in a 285, 75, 16, so a 33. Cool. I have had this exact size before. Uh, it's an E load range, which yeah. is what I wanted. It's a quite a heavy tourer. Now, on the way here, you did blow one out. I did. Um, it was quite an old tyre. I bought it. Oh, screw it, I'm going to mention him. I bought it from Alex from Intense Off Road. Thanks, mate. He did sell it to me for 50 bucks. So it was built in 09. It's quite an old tyre, and the tread just delaminated. Mm. Um, I don't know what caused it. Could have just been sun or whatever. Maybe bit annoying, off. bit annoying, but um, you know, it, it's not like it was a brand new. And then the, underneath, you got another spare? Yeah, so as I said before, I didn't go for a long range tank because I want to be able to keep a second spare underneath. I usually don't run it, but for long trips, I do. So it just fits in the stock locations. The other reason I haven't gone for 35s is that I can't it fit a fit 35 underneath. underneath, which means I need to go for dual wheel carriers and then get tanks, and it gets expensive. This is a much cheaper option where 90% yeah. of the time, I'm fine with 140 litre fuel capacity. Um, it's only those few long trips, and I'm happy to carry Jerry's for those in exchange for the convenience of being able to do this. The other thing is, well, I mean, you're doing all these long trips, right, mainly in this vehicle. A 33 inch tyre is a lot easier to get than a 35 inch tyre. Absolutely. Um, I mean, more so a 31, but yeah, 33 is much easier to get than a yeah, 35. Yeah, I get better temperatures, lower, better fuel economy. That too, less rolling resistance. Less weight, all that stuff. Mm. Um, it just made sense for a tourer to go for a 33. I've got twin lockers, it, it'll get me out of most things. Mm. Your suspension? Suspension is a bit of a mishmash of things that I've uh, sorted out with trial and error. Three inch front coils from Old Man Emu. Um, the rear are four inch Iron Man coils. The thing sits at a two inch lift at best when loaded because um, they're not actually heavy duty. So it's essentially flexi coils. I'm going to put airbags in it because it's, you are? Yeah, it's too heavy. Uh, the shocks are a Marder Extreme Remote Res um, and I'd like a tiny bit more rebound, but other than that, they are fantastic. I've done 40,000 Ks in them and I honestly can't speak highly enough. Okay. Them. They have just changed the way this car handles. I used to have Tough Dog um, adjustables and these things are just in a different leg. It's especially the big whoops, the, the washouts and things you don't see um, and you go through it and um, it seems to just sort the car out so quickly from, it'll, it, you might get on a big angle and, and be a bit scared for a bit and um, it just writes it and you're okay. good. The flies out here are freaking terrible. For these kind of trips, you know, Bushman, you could sponsor us, you know. We would use this stuff all the time then. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff, i got to say. Otherwise, we use Aerogard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, cameraman. To the back. Now, this is the main feature of this vehicle. I'm very impressed with this setup. I've seen a lot of wagons, uh, but so far, this one takes the cake in my opinion. So sorry to, to Graham of the 200 and all the other wagons I've seen. This is pretty awesome. Thanks, mate. So, we just go through it? Let's just go through it. Let's, all right. Should we, I think we'll start from the bottom and go to the top. Okay. Bottom to top. Bottom Let's to do top. It. Bottom. Um, stainless steel tailgate. Just a um, one and a half mil bit of food grade stainless. I, I don't know what grade that is, but whatever it is, it's food grade. Um, got that custom cut, screwed on. Simple. I do everything on it, from from tool, from um, you know workshop stuff and getting grease and crap on it to fish and food and everything in between. But I just scrub it really yeah. well because it's food grade. It doesn't retain anything. I've seen camp ovens, jackalines, steaks, all kinds of food prepared. You name it, it's been on there. <laughs> it's handy bench. And a lot of bums. Yeah, that too. I might do Q&A here. 
That sounds good. The drawers. Drawers. Outback drawers. They're actually from 100 series, so they don't quite fit here. Um, and I had to slightly trim the wings, but honestly, very easy fit. All the standard bolt holes worked. It was great. You rushed this in just before this trip. I did, but because you drowned her before. I did. I had ply drawers, and I swelled up more than your nana's ankles, and um, <laughs> they didn't work after that. So, <laughs> just like nana's ankles, they're fully stainless. Uh, I love them. Uh, they work really well. I've only had them for this trip, so it's not exactly a long-term test. I'm not quite fully set up at the moment in here. I've put a water filter in here instead of some extra tools because we're sharing tools. Um, that was pretty cool when you used that the other day. Yeah, they're quite useful, but you just electrical gear, um, some basic hand tools, spares. Um, I've got spares inside the quarter panels on both sides because it's a, you know it's stuff that you're not going to use very often, like yeah. radiator hoses and belts and things like that. Cans and things under the sides, rags, a bit of fishing gear under here, all that kind of stuff in, so, in, inside these wings. So every nook and cranny has basically got something in it. Yeah, nothing is, is unused. That's why it's heavy. It's also why I need airbags. Um, this is a set of Bunnings drawers. We found when we stacked the plastic cases up, they, these would fall into each other and it was a nightmare, so we made a ply box. Oh, so you pull them out of the plastic? We've just, okay. just used the drawer itself. Uh, now I understand what you're trying to tell me the other day. Um, and put it into our own ply box. Very simple, very light, um, and it gives us great access. You know, if you want knives and forks and whatever, they're all just easily accessible. Um, you know, the coffee machine. Yeah. <laughs> That's a quick coffee machine. Um, 12 volt power here, Anderson plug, more 12 volt power here with fridge plugs and the angle, screw and angle plugs. Um, the Anderson plug there, is that, for, is that an outlet or inlet? Outlet. So that's okay. for the use of the pump or I've got even- Oh, that's right. I've even got a little adapters for that for extra cigarette lighter plugs and things like that. So I, I've actually, and compressors and things yeah. like that. Or, or I've got a lot of Anderson plug gear. Let's not forget about this. <laughs> Bit of paracord with some PVC pipe in the middle and a couple of rolls of Paper towel. This cage here is homemade um, out of steel. So that's been an absolute godsend because it means things can lean against the fridge and not fall in behind. Otherwise, previously I'd pull the fridge out, everything that I had in there would fall in and I couldn't get the yeah. fridge back in. So it, yep. this has been so good to be able to put things on top. Like oh, some bloke keeps asking me to charge camera batteries in his orange case. Who would that be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> I had to go camping with him. <laughs> um, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, you know, I, lo I like Velcro, so I Velcro things on to the top. Man, that is a cool idea. I didn't even know you did that. Yeah, <laughs> so they stay there. Uh, more 240 volt power. So 240 volt power there, 240 volt power there, 1000 watt inverter. Where's yeah, your battery in the back here? It's behind this. Behind so that. 140 amp hour behind that. So together I've got 240 amp hours uh. of power. That's where my spare camera gear is too. That's where your, your, drone, your spare drone is behind this. Yeah. Not my spare drone, Simon's drone. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Fridge on an MSA DS60 drop slide. Um, it's an 80 litre Waco. Um, I thought he looked a bit thirsty in there. <laughs> Get your coldie. There you go, mate. No worries, mate. Enjoy. Um, Lucky bastard. <laughs> go on. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm here. We are camping. We're, we're camping. Not we're, not, we're not going anywhere else. Oh, I've got a really cold one here in the freezer. Cheers. <coughs> Cheers. <coughs> Sorry, cameraman. You already had a drink. That was very bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so, 80 litre fridge freezer. It's got a 50. 50 litre. So dual compartment. Dual compartment, 50 litres of fridge, 26 litres of freezer or something like that. Um, does pretty well. I've had four of them now in different versions and, and things. Um, never had an issue with one. Uh, I've had one get stolen once and two sold and this yeah, is my fourth. That. That's why I just modified episodes delayed. He got his car raided. Yeah, um, I've so, got a little, some, yeah. some pull cords here to keep the cable out of the way so I don't have to move it every time. Um, and they're just those little keychain holders. Which, Such a cool idea. 
works quite well. I've done something a, bit, a little bit more fancy on mine, but this is really cool. This is a cheap option, but yours actually was very inexpensive and I'm pretty impressed by it. I have yeah. to say, I'm very impressed by well, it. I've got the idea for someone else. So. Yeah. You have to see that in stage five, which will already be out. I always bring my work with me, so. Ah, uh, yes. Um, workaholic. Yeah, workaholic. Or Sorry, some, alcoholic. Something aholic. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to see that again. That is such a cool idea. So, off the side of the road. <laughs> Um, Rubbish yeah, collection? Yeah, in a western suburbs neighbourhood. Um, I saw that and thought, nah, that's mine. I'm having that. And I love it. Light strip across here. I um, see I'm using flexi stuff, you use the solid one. It doesn't work. It's actually buggered. That's why I'm, that glad, buggered? I'm, that's why I'm glad I got that roll of warm light oh, for you. Yeah. But it, it will have a thing. It's all wired up, it's got a switch there. Um, it just needs to be put in. There's a fuse box behind there in the quarter panel. Um, other than that, it's, it is what it looks like. Excellent. Simple, but... Do you want to show good? us quickly, you can open this fridge without dropping it down as well? Yeah, so the idea is that I can... This is my dedicated food prep side. So, tool drawer here, which I can open with the fridge slide. Your beer. <laughs> with the fridge slide down, but I want to be able to prep food here and not have to move my food prep to get to anything. Mm. So I've done it so that I can get to my food in here, which is camp oven and wok and things like that in here. And then I can pull this out. And if, because I've got it locked, it stays up. It doesn't up. drop down. Yeah. yeah. And you can still reach into it. And I can still, I can still reach into it just fine. That's the reason I have it is because it doesn't open fully. And so that's why it. I can't have yeah. a normal fridge light. Also my girlfriend's five foot. So that's never going to work. Interior time. Yeah, so I've kept it quite basic. A um, few little creature comforts, a better stereo, Alpine head unit, a dodgy switch panel that is <laughs> functional and is on Velcro so I can access it and fix things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I plan to replace that with the stainless panel, it'll look much nicer, but anyway. Um, all the normal controls, diff lock controls. There's a lot of buttons here. For, I've never been in an 80 series Sahara, and this looks like the DeLorean on it, the inside. It's that old Japanese um, sort of mentality of the more buttons it has, the flasher it is. So instead of having slide knobs for air conditioning and, and, and you know, everything dials, is buttons. everything is buttons. There has to be a button for everything. So rear cool, rear heat, electric mirrors, my windscreen washers. Sorry, and everything uh, still sorry, works. My, my headlight washers. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> we're not driving anywhere. We're in the, cam uh, in the bush and we're camping. We've pulled up. For the night. <clears throat> we're not going anywhere. Well, for the day and the night. That's your navigation. It is. And I know this because we've been looking at each other's maps. Yeah. So mud maps, I run on there. I run mud maps one. I looked at mud maps two and three and I didn't like them because they, they took all the WA maps out of them. So I've got a really, really old version of mud maps, about six years old. Uh, they're nowhere near as detailed as HEMA, um, but they are very good. I run HEMA as well. This run, my phone runs HEMA. Um, my phone is- You got this, the HEMA app then? I've got the HEMA app. And that, so I, I, I have both. Do you have it on the iPad as well? Or? That iPad is so old that it won't run it. Okay. Um, this is an iPad 1. It doesn't even have a camera. It's ancient. It's huge. It's huge. It's so <laughs> fat. <laughs> it's a brick. Yeah. Just okay. like a car. This is a fridge. It is a fridge. It's factory. It also has an ice maker. So these are ice trays and... It will make ice. That is ridiculous. It fits 13, How did I not know this? Fits 13 cans of soft drink. Yeah, right. Um, uh, and it has a drain hole in the bottom, so you can just put a hose in it and hose it out if you want to. It's, that is ridiculous. It's quite clever. Radio is a Motorola GM3338. Uh, Only um, a 40 channel line. It's actually a 100 and something channel. I think okay, it's a 200 you channel it. even. I can't find the programming software. I can't get the programming software to work. I have the cable and everything to do it, but okay. I haven't been able to do it. All right, so we moved the uh, headrest. See, he does have one. Otherwise, you're going to snore neck. Yeah. 
This is your second radio, which is a handheld. Yeah, it's a UHF, VHF, Chinese thing that seems to work quite well. On the back here, you uh, have a sol my... your solar input. I do, I've got a bit of everything. So it, it just does everything, it does my, it's my DC-DC charger and it's my solar charger, MPPT solar controller. Um, 180 watts of solar, which is not getting very much power at the moment. Three amps it peaked out there, but um, uh, a lot of shade. Yeah, it'll do 10 amps pretty consistently in in good conditions. Um, and How many watts is that? 180. 180 um, watts. I had 240 before. These panels are quite old. I had 240 before. I smashed one of the four panels um, on the gib. It flew off and smashed into my light pole. I'm down to 180, and I will definitely be going back to 240 because I used to get. 15 amps almost oh wow yeah it was really good the two the two folding panels they just seem to work really really nicely mm. um and it would charge very quickly um, yeah so you ripped the seats out here i've taken the seats out for i take the seats out for long trips only four bolts really easy um so around the cfx 50 and the 80 um and we never had an issue with power okay with, with 240 watts of solar and this much storage it was great Hey there. Nice brick you got here. Thanks, oh, mate. Beer? Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Cheers. Righto. Who's that guy? I don't know. Out in Pilbara, most remote place uh, at the moment. And there's random hillbilly. The nah, that's Murray. He just <laughs> keeps drinking our beer. Your beer, <laughs> thankfully. Our beer. It's all good. He's my cousin. <laughs> Second cousin, alright? <laughs> you didn't hear that. <laughs> you and I. It's technically legal. Okie dokie. <laughs> we are not drunk. I'm, I'm honest. We've had one beer and we've been in the sun for a long time. Yeah, and just a bit stir crazy and like yeah. lack of access to other people. Yep, yep, that too. <laughs> okay, QA, I don't even know where to start here. What's your best mod on this vehicle? Best single mod. All right, all right. Your, your top three favorite modifications to this vehicle. Top three favorites. <clears throat> You're gonna I, struggle to pick, I think. I am. I love, I love the drawers. Really? You're gonna do the drawers? Nah, I'm not gonna do the drawers. The drop slide okay. is great. It adds so much versatility. Um, can I have the battery system? Yeah, I'll give you the battery system. Okay, cool. So the battery system and having that much storage. Um, so is that with the, the BCDC, the solar panels, the whole setup? Yeah. Okay. So having basically an, a, a system that without starting my car, um, I can survive indefinitely. Well, I can run, a, run two fridges indefinitely mm. and lights at night. And I never have to worry. Every day my car charges itself. So in other words, if you break down, you can just sit here and chill with your solar panel. All right. So for example... Um, I left my car for a few days in the bush, uh, running both fridges, and I had terrible solar. Uh, it was um, it was in the shade, and got back, and the batteries were quite flat. But particularly the starter battery was quite flat. Um, I, it was just just in bad condition. So side of the road, we had to jump start the car. I turned it off for, for lunch, and it wouldn't start again. I put my jumper leads on so that I'd get power from my other two batteries. They were down at about 11.9. It still wouldn't start. So what I had to do was was charge it. So we disconnected or we turned all the 12 volt accessories off. We left it in the sun for half an hour and that was enough time wow. to charge the battery enough to start it. Okay. So it's a sun powered jumper pack. But you use movable panels though. I use movable panels. So, that so I you can, can angle it to the, the sun. And so I can park in the shade as mm. well. And having angled panels really makes a big, big difference. Like, serious big difference. I have 160 watt panels on my vehicle. They're fixed. I'm getting nowhere near as much power as he is. And my panels are really high quality panels. Your panels are the cheaper versions. Oh, but because cheap. you can angle them. So if I could angle mine, I'd oh, be all right. What, you get way more power than me. Yeah. And, and I used to have them strapped to my roof all the time. And I thought, that's cool. I don't have to worry about it. It wasn't until I started angling them and I could put them out at, out the night before, 
on the right angle so they catch the morning sun. That sun between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., that's two hours of really high quality, really good sun. On an angle. And that will give me 20 amp hours. Mm. It's a huge amount, you know, when you've only used 50. Okay. You know, it does half your charge basically before you've finished breakfast. So you can see why that's one of his bigger picks. You ought to pick another one now. Probably driving lights. Uh, especially going going out with blokes like this <laughs> who consistently bring you into camp at night. And also so I can leave work at, at, on a Friday night um, and go camping to have great driving lights. Yeah, to drive um, the day before, right? To drive the day before, to rock Cut up at down. camp yeah. on your Saturday morning um, and not have to worry, to get in there safely, to have great vision on tracks. To, I can see the whoop coming up. I can see the rocks that I need to crawl over or whatever, um, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Least useful mods. Least useful mods, that's a, that's a new one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Bastard. <laughs> um, to be honest, I chop and change the thing so much, that's so quite a... So you cut out the useful, usefulness then. <laughs> Can I talk about mods I had and I've got rid of? Yes, I? yes, do that. Great, my dual battery isolator. I had a normal dual battery isolator and I never got good charge because these things have old alternators, um, they um, don't give a great amount of charge. I never used to be able to charge my second, let alone my third battery up fully um, and putting a BCDC in completely changed that. I, 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 I have no affiliation with Red Arc um, or any other company that does DC-DC chargers. You sure about so, You just gave them a plug. Fine, Red Ark or any other any other DC DC maker. <laughs> no, no, I don't no. care. You can cut that out. <laughs> um, but having a DC DC charger has been fantastic compared to having the old one. I never use my boost gauge. Really? You use boost gauge? I never use it. Um, yeah, I kind of just look at mine. No, actually, I, I do. I, I do use mine, but yeah, you don't use yours. I, I wish I had an AGT gauge. Um, I bought one and it didn't fit, and I haven't got around to fitting, okay. it, fitting a new one. So if you only got room for one gauge, go to AGT because that's AGT. probably more um, relevant to what you're doing. Than I bought a boost, boost gauge because it was easy. Well, boost gauge is just like, oh yeah, I'm doing 20 pounds of boost. Oh, now. look how much boost I can do. Yeah. It doesn't actually have any bearing on how I drive, um, whereas an AGT <laughs> gauge. <laughs> Speak for yourself with your skyline. <laughs> I'll cut that out. Skyline's <laughs> toy line. Okay. <laughs> now on to your skyline's are cool, man. <laughs> Skyrun. <laughs> That's, I'll, I'll be I'll be I'll be kind. It's a Supra because it's Toyota. Biggest thing to look out for on the Sahara 80 series. The gearboxes can have issues. I've had mine rebuilt and strengthened. Um, because Automatic we're talking about. It's an auto, so um, I had mine rebuilt with better valve bodies um, and that's made a huge difference to drivability and performance. Before it used to slip, I towed a boat up a hill and the gearbox was making all kinds of noises and heat. So. Mm. Fuel consumption uh, on this trip. On this trip, what did I get, 16 coming up here? Fully loaded. 16 on the highway, 110 kilometers per hour. And that was 110 everywhere, up hills, overtaking, you know, so. I'll say 110 average. 110 average. Yeah, you can't get us on that. Um, it was um, <laughs> hard off-road touring. Um, it does between 17 and 18 and a half, depending on, on conditions. Your, your best trip so far? Kimberley. The Kimberley. Absolutely. There's how many? Like, how many of those? Thirty. Top three places you went. Um, north of Columbaroo, near Pago Mission. Um, running waters. Here. Oh, where, Pilbara. Where, running, where okay. we've just been. Yep. But that was on the way up because I went through. On your way to the Kimberley. Okay, yep. so I'll let you, I'll let you have it then. Considering um, it's in a different postcode, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, it's not far off the Kimberley. And it's the Kimberley, not the Kimberleys. Did I say Kimberleys? No, you didn't, but a lot of people do. Good. That's what I pick it. Oh, my third is the Fitzroy River um, on Yeda Station, uh, okay. just outside of Broome. Beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> my final question is going to be, I just bought an 80 series Sahara, like this one. Goodbye. <laughs> What's the first thing you were telling me to do to it? It is stock as a rock. 
drive it. Go and have some fun. Um, work out where you need, what, what you need. So the only thing I would say that just straight off the bat is put a ball bar on it. Um, I think that I've hit a, quite a few roos in this. This is a very strong statement because I have not asked what is your top three mods. I've asked what's the first thing you do. The first thing you say is bull bar. So it is, you hit something, it's a, it's a trip ender. It's a total trip ender. I had my girlfriend driving it a little while ago, cruise control, 110, down south to Margaret River, we were going to the wine region. You know, it, this wasn't even an off-road trip. It populated was just area. Populated area, really normal sort of thing. She smacks the road at 110. I had to clean it the next day. That's it. Didn't crack anything, didn't do anything. It just, you know, it's a shame that the road died, but um, it, we didn't. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Not that the road died, it's, it was great. The bull bar was great, it performed perfectly. Yeah, 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 we understand. All right, thank you very much, Harry. We're gonna to have to cut this off, we could talk all day, but. Um, we will, we will talk all day. We'll talk yeah, we will, but not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you very much, guys, for watching. Uh, if you've got any more questions, Harry is quite frequent on social media. Actually, um, he's on Instagram as well, so look on the screen there somewhere you'll see some funny brick references to this vehicle <laughs> and some pretty cool photos too so do check it out uh please do subscribe if you haven't already and you can go to patreon.com slash ronnie dale to support the creation of videos like this and what we're doing right now out here in the pilbara thanks again see you in the next video <laughs> that bushman's is good yeah it's not bad look at this the flies have all gone yeah.